Hi, I'm Scotty. I service, repair and restore vintage and antique mechanical clocks. Welcome to Scotty's Clock World. This is the clock we're working on today. Hand cut crystal, boudoir clock, mid-century, made in Germany. No cracks, chips, nibbles, fly bips or anything else on it. Okay, we're going to take the movement to pieces. We're going to service it, oil it, put it back together again. First thing we do, we've got to remove these nuts at the back. I've got a little 5 mil spanner that comes in very handy for these things. They're not easy to access. Loosen them up a little bit, get them over the lip. Then we'll take the winder. And the time set pillar out. Right, so we wind the key in the opposite direction, wind it clockwise, and it'll come out. This one just pulls straight out, doesn't wind. Now we can take off the nuts of these. It's a little bit tight. Take them off, then we can remove the back plate. One, and then the clock movement will fall out. There we go, we'll take that off. That's the inside of the movement that we're going to strip down and clean, oil, put back together again. Drops out through the front, as easy as that. of light on that's a movement there that's a dial right let's start to take this to pieces first we'll remove these screws that hold the movement in and we've just lost the tip of our screwdriver Loosen that up a little bit, bit big. Loosen that, push it in. And tighten that screw down. That'll hold the blade in. Right, now we'll remove these screws. One. That's two. Then, we can carefully pull the movement out. There's the movement. Spring.
balance wheel, hair spring. Right, let's take that to pieces. Put those in there, we don't lose them. Now we've got to wind up the spring because we need to contain it in one of these clamps I've made. Oh, that seems to be all right. That'll hold. Put that aside. Right, now we'll undo these three nuts here. And they appear to be smaller than five mil, so I'll have to find another spanner for them. Right, now we'll take the hands off. We'll use a pair of tweezers for that. Turn that light off, it's a bit bright on that one. Slide them under. And gently lift up. Oop, a little bit tight, I'll have to use my fingernails. You don't want to snap the, the hand off the collet. In his hand, down under for the hour hand, being careful not to scratch the face. There we go, they're both gone. Now we can remove the face from the movement. And there's three screws. One there, one there, right in this one we've got two and a couple of hooks, okay let's undo those. Slot the screwdriver down the hole in the plate to make it easier. Get into the head of the screw and turn it round. And the second one coming out a little bit more easily. Back to the other one. And there we go. Unwind it. Drops out. Put him in a dish. Now the movement should just lift off there. Right, that's the face. 
Let's move, put that out of the way. And whoop, it's him getting caught up in my glove. I think I might have to change to my blue gloves, I think. Too many bits catching. Right, that'll be better. The fine teeth on the wheels won't catch on my gloves now. So that's what the movement looks like. Right, we'll take those two wheels off. From there. We've got the spring contained in a, in a clip there. Right, we'll take the balance wheel and the spring out now. It's actually smaller again. Quite a small, a really tiny little. That'll do us. Now, first thing we'll have to do, get a We have to remove that pin there that holds the spring in place. That comes out first and pull it straight out. Be very careful that you don't bend the hairspring. Put that aside. Now, we'll loosen the wheel, wrong one. You wind this out, so the wheel loosens, the pivot, it'll drop out. There we go. Now, the spring has to be very, very carefully pulled out through that hole. First one, and then out through this little regulator here. I'll actually straighten that out a tiny bit to make it easier. That will then come out there. Very, very carefully. Take the spring out as caught at the moment. Push it down a tiny little bit. Now 
the inner loop is caught over the regulator arm. Take that last loop off and out it comes. Thank you. There it is. Have to be very, very careful of the hairspring before I put that back in. I'll show you how to put the curve back on that. It's a little bit straight. There's a very fine pivot there. There's also a very fine pivot there. So you have to be very, very careful with those. Right, that's the nervous bit gone. Right, let's take the rest of it to pieces and see what we've got. Now, tiny little spanner. Four and a half mil. This and those. One. Two. Take the one right off. Get another dish. Take the dish. Loosen this one off. Spin him up. And remove it. Two. Holding the movement together so it doesn't pop open. Three. And the fourth one. Now we'll very carefully move the top plate up a little bit at a time. Till we clear the winding spring. There, and that, and that little guy. Comes from there. I'll take the spring off first. There we go. Right, we'll take the spring off. We'll take each one of these wheels out. And that one. This arm, and that, that will probably stay there because it's got a wheel on the other side, a pinion. Okay, I'll pop those into the ultrasonic now and clean them. We'll bring them back when they're clean and we'll reassemble the movement. Okay, I found the correct box to put it on so the bottom plate won't keep falling in. Okay, let's put the movement together. First wheel goes under there. This 
this one. Second wheel goes in there. That guy goes in there. Whoop, almost. up on the second wheel goes there tiny little lightweight things and that piece goes there But what I should have done, we might have to redo the whole thing, but what I should have done was put the spring in first so it doesn't push everything out. See how we go. There we go, it's all started to jump out. I hope we'll have to redo that. Oh. No. Okay, put the spring in first. The hole for that. Yes. There, that's got that. Pull that around. Okay. Now put the wheels back in again. This one. Second one. Third one, and the R. You really got to concentrate on these things, they're so small, the pivots. All right, let's put the Top plate on that. Let's see if we can get this spring in properly. Pop it down over the top. Put some screws on that to hold them into place. That's got him. Wind him down a bit. And another one. Not easy with gloves on, but we don't want to leave fingerprints on the movement when it's finished. Right now we'll roll the oh, loosen it up a little bit. The 
spring in. Oh, let's bring it up a bit more. down a bit not too much because we've got to put the pivots in yet that's there second wheel Okay, wind the screws down so it doesn't pop up. Then we'll wind up the, the spring. Nah. And get it into place. our key. Put the key on. Wind the spring up. Again, no, we probably won't need the clamp for a minute. Keep that. And take the winder off. Then check and see that everything Right, all the pivot. Yeah, 
Yep, it's working properly. Move that in the middle. I'll put some oil on these pivots before we go any further. One drop on each. And a couple around the winder. Turn the movement over. Repeat on the other side. Drop my leaf down there. Two on the back of the winder. Okay. We can see the movement working there. The wheels are turning. Now we'll put the hairspring in. Being very, very careful not to bend it or put kinks in it. And it's not an easy thing to do and get that bottom pivot in bugger jumped out get that in springs caught around the the slow fast regulator so put that in there we've got to do now is straighten that up put that pivot in the top Unfortunately, it just jumped out again. That's where we want it. I'm going to tighten this up a tiny bit so we can see where we're going. Line it up, we get it a bit closer. Didn't be able to pull it in and hold it while we tighten it. Just a tiny bit out. Back, back it off a little bit. That up to there and hold it. Then align the bottom one, hopefully over there. Then slowly tighten it up so that we don't catch the pivot. Not far enough yet, it'll drop out. Yeah. 
that's in there. Phew. Make sure we're up and down. Yep. Okay, we'll tighten that down a bit now. We'll adjust that later on and get that correct. That in itself is a major plus having got that in. Okay. Now I'm going to put the arm in. Once we start that, of course, everything else is going to drop out. Okay, we'll get that. First pivot in there. under that plate while everything else falls out on there first wheel second wheel now we've got to get this guy back in again Tiny bit more, and second wheel's dropped out now. Goes into there. We line up that one. That one. Last guy goes into there. Got him. Almost. Yeah. Alright, that's there. Right, we'll wind that down. And see what we got. That's right. It's on the balance wheel. We see a tiny little rod just there. That has to go inside that slot on this arm. So we'll and we want. That piece of the hair spring to go through the slot in the regulator there. Which is most reluctant to do. Tiny little bit more and it'll get it's a little bit out of whack on the end. See if that'll make a difference or not. It goes through there. Through a bit more. That. Lost picture. There we go. 
that in there, the hair spring goes down that hole in there. Now what we've got to do when we put our pin in there is to make sure that we keep the spring straight. We don't want it at an angle. So I'll get that type of pin. Here we have him. And we'll push that into that hole before we tighten it. We'll check. You can see that bizarre angle that the hair springs at, so that's no good. It has to be running parallel to the, between the plates. So we'll take that out again and reposition it. Now, whoop, drop him. Got it. Put it underneath this time, see how that goes right into the center. I'll push that in a little bit tighter and we'll see what it looks like. Wind it up a little bit, the spring, a little bit of pressure on it. Then we can see how that spring is working. Yeah, everything's in line there. Those two pins there aren't bent. Just check those to make sure they're right. One there. That one there will put a drop of oil on each of those. pin has moved a tiny bit. I'll take that out, put that back in again. It's got it straight. Now, I'll back off the, the base of this. Hmm. Must be that one. Back it off a little bit. We'll oil it because we want that to spin freely. Okay, I'll put some oil on that, then we'll come back. Right, I put a drop of oil on the pivot there, on the pivot there at the top under that block, one on the pin there and one on the pin down there. I'll back the pressure off a little bit on the hairspring. I've got a little bit of pressure on that spring. So 
let's give it a go and see how it runs. There it goes. Right, I'll recheck all the tolerances, then we'll put it back together again. There we are, you can see the movement running now. I've adjusted the tolerances, and there it goes. Right, now we're ready to reassemble the movement and put it back into its case. Just wheel on first. And this one. Make sure it fits into the pinion on the first wheel we put on. Get this to fit in. There we go. Now we'll fit the face on and tighten it down. And have a look and see where that is where that clip goes, I would think. Let's try it and see. Get in, line it up with the center, hold it, turn it upside down, and yes, the holes align. Right. Now, where's our screws? We'll get that screwed down. Pop that into there. First one, not tight yet. You've got to get the other one in. Next screw, drop him in. It's got him. Tighten him down. Right, now we can lift the movement up, make sure everything's right. We can now tighten those two screws down. And that one. Right. <laughs> right, now we'll put the hands on. Our hand first. Line it up. Push those down. Get 
the right. Possibly a bit better. Now the Minutan. On the top. Push it down with your thumbs. Line it up at 12 o'clock. And that's that. Remember when you're working on these movements, this is called a standard two inch movement. They made millions of them. I mean millions. <clears throat> Once you've cleaned it, put it back together again, you always start both hands at midday or midnight, whichever you prefer. You don't try to set it up at quarter past two or something. They always start at midnight. Okay. So. There on that goes there. We'll clean the piece of glass that goes in there. Tiny little bit of metho. Wipe it round the clean cloth. Check the other side for fingerprints. Dry it off. Pop it back in again. Now we have to align these holes here, that one, and that one, and if you had the third screw, of which we've only got two, you'd align that one. So we have a look, we've got two holes close side by side there, so we look here, and that'll be those two there. So we drop the movement with those lines relatively well aligned. Drop the movement in and rotate it slightly. There we can see it lining up. All right, let's put the first screw in. our hole that's aligned. We'll start the screw off in there. Move around to the next one. Holds the line, pop the screw in, just get it started. Then we can screw them in properly. One, go back to the top one over here. Screw that one in. Okay. Screwdriver over there. 
Don't want that. Now, we'll get our crystal case. Take the movement up. Drop it in. Put the back plate on it. Line that other one up. There he goes. Now we've got two screws to put on here. It's a bit tight. One on there. Hope that runs down a little bit more easily. Yep, that it does. What I'll do is I'll take this one off. Right up here. Yep, that goes in more easily. Right, now before we, first thing we do, we'd better check and see what size spanner we're going to need. Five mil. Okay. Now, check the face of the clock. Make sure that 12 o'clock is in the correct position. Hold it, then tighten up the nuts on the back. That'll hold the movement in place. There, over the other side. relatively strong we can check it to make sure that that's 12 o'clock is in the right position it's moved a little bit got to come back right and tighten those down A bit loose, needs a bit more. That should hold it, feels a bit pretty tight now. Okay. Put the hand winder on. It's a friction fit, just pushes in. Screw the winder on again. There we have it. Set the time. And bar six. And there we have it. Finally finished. This is the rack hook right here. That pin, when you put the gathering pallet back on before you hammer it down to keep it firm, that pin has to fall.